All right, uh, let's do so the system updates. Again, this is, I think it's something to do with Mongo. It's not like if you're using, if you're used to using Firebase, for example, you can use snapshots. So whenever there's a change, Firebase will invoke or call the whoever's using them to make them re-render whatever data you have. I'm not, I haven't quite figured out that with Mongo yet, how to properly set that up. But there is sort of a, um, uh, a little, little thing we can do with it. So I'm gonna expand new, delete, and I think those are the two we want for now. So I'm gonna start with the, uh, the delete one here, right? So right now it's just delete based on ID and, and a little comment here. And then we have the fetch blah, de blah. I left this, when I did the delete this blank down here, this, um, what's it called? this then here, and inside of this, I'm just gonna use something like a little bit old school. Uh, I'm just gonna call the get all to do again. So whenever I click delete and it sends the information to delete, then when that's resolved or when this is resolved, I'm going to just uh, call the function up here called get all to do's, which basically goes to this one and stores the data again and refreshes it. Um, it's not. I don't think this is optimal, uh, but it is a way of doing it. And I have too many. I had a, uh, it was part of an object, which it shouldn't be. So it's just, if you want to have it on one line, you can, if you want to have it on two lines, but it's basically just this you add. So get all to do. So let's click save. Let's go test it real quickly on a delete. So go to to do's, I'm just going to delete the, this one down here, delete, boop, and now you have an uh, instant refresh on it. And the same thing can, we can do for the, um, we just copy this one down here. So for the, the new one up here, after my request is done, so after my fetch is done, I can attach the then for it, click save, and same principle here, so test, test, and hit new, boom, and then it's at the bottom, and then we can delete, 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 and we can go into the test and we have an issue, failed to fetch. So I did another issue here, but let's see what that is. Uh oh. So I probably deleted something and I'm gonna go check what it is. Oh, I think my server, the node down here, so this crashed. Uh, so my actual node, I'm just gonna restart it and see if it, everything works again. Uh, so let's do home to do and go into test and update it with test two, test two. Great, so now everything works. I think I clicked something too fast and that kind of made the Mongo server right now block it. You can crash it. Uh, but anyways, we have a fully functional uh, application now and we're doing a sort of a not optimal way of reloading information, but at least it works. Uh, so this is also if you have issues with why is my data not reactive? Which it is, it's reactive in view. Otherwise it wouldn't do this one here, right? So that's the thing. So for me it is to figure out how do I make Mongo, MongoDB actually, when I do a update to that database up here, whenever I send something up here or update something here, how do I make it go, force it to give that information back to view or React or Angular, whatever you're working with and have it an update. Uh, I can't just do a on update lifecycle in here because it's, I don't think the issues is inside view. I think the issue is we're not, Mongo is not actually telling that there have, have been a change. So it can't react to anything in here. The data will, whenever I get new data, it reacts, so it updates it. So I need to figure out how to make the Mongo send this information. All right. That was the most of the series and I might add a few extra videos for like a few updates along the way, but uh, that's like a, that's a maybe, uh, but hope you enjoyed it.